This is going to be a quick one because I don't have too much to share here yet, but I've just been starting to explore some JavaScript proxy related stuff. Proxies have been around for a while. I've kind of been sleeping on them, uh, but I decided, hey, let's let's see what we can do with this. And this is kind of the first idea I came up with to do something kind of out of the ordinary with proxies. And I'm interested to see if you guys like this uh, and if you have other ideas or know of other examples of doing something like this. It's been years since I used Rails or Active Record, but uh, this is kind of like what, in my understanding, Rails or really Active Record does when you create a new model. The idea is we have this create data access object function. It takes as a generic type uh, our model. So for example, this could be like a basic user that has some ID and a name. And now if we do user DAO dot, you can see we get autocomplete for these uh, four different methods, find by ID, find by name, find one by ID, and find one by name. These are just like query methods that we might use. And notice that, of course, ID is a number, name is a string, find by ID takes a value that's a number, returns uh, an array of whatever that shape is, so our user shape here. And then, of course, find one just uh, does the same thing, but instead of returning a promise of an array, just returns a promise of a single item. And you can see this in action here. We can find a user. We can find a group of users. I haven't actually implemented this, but you can see at the very least our types are all passing here. You here is a single user, as you might expect. You uh, two, as you might expect, is an array of users. So uh, a very basic test, and we can actually see it working if we run the tests. I mean, there's not much going on here, but specifically notice this logging. So we have finding one where ID is one, finding multiple where name is John, which matches our tests here. So let's take a look at our create DAO object and see exactly what's going on here. We're creating a proxy. Now, if you're not familiar with proxies in JavaScript, uh, I thoroughly recommend the MDN documentation on this. Proxies are great. The idea basically is a proxy is an object that can wrap another object. And anytime we're trying to access a property on the inner object, it has to go through the proxy first. There are many use cases where this can be uh, useful. You can see like proxy objects are commonly used to log property accesses, validate, format, sanitize inputs, that type of thing. But the thing that I'm doing uh, with this proxy is um, basically trapping calls to our object internal methods. Now, the object internal methods here, there's a great list of them right here. You can see anytime you want to like get a property, set a property, delete a property, um, you know, get the prototype or set the prototype, all of the kind of common operations that you might do on a JavaScript object have these internal methods that are called. And just to show you an example, if we look at the at the get here, you know, um, the get is like property access, right? Whenever you're calling uh, a property access, which you might do by object dot property name or the square brackets expression, or, you know, if you're inside the object, you can do like private property access like this. All of these are calling that get internal method underneath the surface. And what proxy does is allow us to implement our own version of that. I'm going to, again, harken back to Ruby, um, not Rails specifically this time, but in Ruby, you can do this thing called method missing, right? Which allows you to basically dynamically catch a call to a method that does not exist on an object and do something. And I think that's how Rails um, active record functions work. And we're going to do something similar here. First of all, we have this type at the top, which I'm just calling data access object, and it takes some type T and we're going to loop over every key in T and we're going to create a find by and a find one by property in our resulting type. This is kind of some fun type mapping, nothing too fancy going on here. Maybe I'll just point out, so we're looping over the keys of T. You can use as to basically rename that key and we're capitalizing it here. So we get, you know, proper camel case there. And then of course we're setting that to the value it takes should be T of K. Um, unfortunately in TypeScript, we can't do like multiple mappings over the same keys within one object. So we just have to uh, intersect those objects. Otherwise, this is a pretty basic situation. Now here's the way that we're kind of hacking the proxy to work with TypeScript in the way that I want it to. We have our function here to create, it returns something that matches this type. Now the thing about a proxy is in TypeScript, the resulting type of the proxy is the same as the object that it's proxying. You can't change it in any way. So if we look at the proxy type here, if we go to the definition, you can see the new function on our proxy here, it takes some generic T, which is the, the first argument, our target here. And what it returns is not like proxy of T or something. It's just 
T. The type is T. This makes sense because ideally the whole point of a proxy is you can pass this proxy object in place of your T object and your calling code shouldn't need to know that it's dealing with a proxy and not with the actual underlying object. However, we're going to kind of hack this by just passing it an empty object and then saying as DAO of T. Of course, then we're also passing through our generic here. I guess since I'm casting it here, we probably don't actually need that. So we're casting our empty object to that. And then the main thing we want to do is trap all of the calls to get. Now remember, get is going to be anytime we try and access a property on the object that we return here. If we go back to our tests, that's going to be where we do dot find one by ID or dot find by name. Now, even though those are the only properties we've defined here, we do want to make sure that those are the only ones we're trapping, right? I guess it's still possible, even though TypeScript won't really allow it, that you could, you know, uh, do something else. But if we did some kind of casting to get around this, that function in production would still end up being uh, caught by our trap here. So we want to make sure we handle that. In our get here, the target, of course, is our original object, which is just this base object here. We're not really going to use that here, although I'll show you reflect here in just a second. Prop is going to be the function name or the property name that we're accessing. It's going to be a string or a symbol. And that's why our first check here is to see if we're dealing with a string property here. Now, if we're not, that's where we call reflect.get. Now, we're not going to go too deep on reflect here, but basically this is kind of the equivalent of doing target prop, just directly accessing that property on that target object. But basically this line is saying our trap doesn't apply here. Let this call pass through to the original object. However, if this is a string, we're going to check to see if our prop starts with find by or later on if it starts with find one by. And if it does, then we can find the key by uh, slicing that off. And then we're doing two lowercase here. Two lowercase um, is probably not completely the right thing to do in this case to be honest in my simple example here where we have just um, id and name and there's no like camel case properties in here uh, it works okay so we know if we're accessing one of these functions and then we can just return a function that matches it and actually i have a mistake in here here we're doing number here we're doing t key of t right t key of t uh is really neither of these are exactly the right type for this t key of t is a little bit better than number however we're not getting any type errors on this either. This is where I point out that like this isn't really completely type safe on the inside, as is often the case with TypeScript libraries, I guess. Uh, it's decently type safe on the outside. We know that find one by ID has the right type of argument and the right return type. Find by name has, you know, the string and returns the array. So this is matching the, the interface that we want. However, there's nothing going on inside of our uh, get trap here that actually enforces that we are matching the type that we say we are. So that's kind of entirely up to you to write good tests around this if you are doing something like this in a library, I guess. In this case, you can see I'm just console logging so we can see that we actually know what the key and the value that we would be working with here. You can imagine instead this may be querying a database or something like that uh, and then returning the results from that. This is kind of my initial attempt at trying to do something kind of fancy with a proxy. I haven't wasn't able to find any TypeScript libraries that are doing this type of thing with a proxy, but if you know of any, do let me know in the comments. Um, what do you think of this approach? approach. It's a little bit hacky. It's not really what proxies, I think, are intended for. However, years ago when I was learning Ruby, I was super fascinated with the method missing uh, feature that it has. I think for a while, I want to say Firefox. Actually, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to Google this and we're going to find out right now. I thought there was something that Firefox supported for a while um, as like a Firefox only thing. Oh uh, yeah, this comes from 2011 and mentions Mozilla, in which case no such method is what you're after. <laughs> but I guess uh, Firefox does not support that anymore. Anyway, definitely play with proxies. Let me know if you guys have done some fun stuff with proxies. Yeah, this was just a quick one, an experiment I was playing with this week and thought you guys might like to see. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.